Bod Squad babes. Oh my gosh. It is so beyond amazing to be here with you this afternoon. And I hope everyone is absolutely loving their first second day on the program. Um, if we haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, my name is Jay Schaefer. Um, I am a speaker, writer, and life coach, and I'm just in here amongst you babes to spread as much love and light and knowledge as I possibly can on this planet, but more specifically right now, luckily for you girls, just kidding, um, in this group. I'm so excited to be here with you all, and I hope you're all smashing your first two days on the program, which I know obviously that you already are. Um, feel free to pop in below with any questions or pop into my inbox with any questions if you have any, but I really just wanted to love on you girls today with this. Um, yeah, with an epic training just for you um, to really help you with the mind stuff, like the mental stuff behind change and transformation. Because we know that we've got the physical tools with Isogenics and with this incredible 30 day program, we've got the physical stuff, we've got, um, you know, that like the, the practical stuff down pat, and we've got it literally like hand delivered on a silver platinum encrusted platter, as Anna would say, to our front door. We've had it delivered to our door. But a lot of the time, like with change and transformation comes the mental stuff, comes the internal stuff, comes the emotional and energetic and spiritual stuff. And that's what I wanted to talk about this afternoon because that stuff is, in my opinion, just as, if not more important, just as important, if not more important um, than the physical side. And for me, like it's, they go hand in hand and you can't really have one without the other. The energetic affects the physical, the spiritual affects the emotional. It's all just this big, like it's all part of holistic change, holistic transformation and holistic health. Um, Anna jumped in really briefly before and talked a little bit about this stuff um, this morning or yesterday, I think it was about eliminating so um, certain words like the word wagon from our vocabulary and I really just want to expand and extend on that in this training as well. So what happens a lot of the time when we start anything because this isn't just 30 days this is a total whole full mind body spirit transformation and if you haven't got that now then babe welcome to the show and welcome to the program because this shit is about to get blown wide open. But what happens with any change in any transformation often we start out really well. We start out on the right foot we start out making incredible leaps and bounds in our progress. And what happens along the way is this pesky little thing called our ego likes to pop up and remind us of all the reasons why we loved being the way that we were, right? So we could be like, I, you guys, I've hit so many rock bottoms in my life. It's not even funny. I've hit rock bottoms romantically. I've hit rock bottoms physically. I've hit rock bottoms emotionally. I've hit rock bottoms spiritually. I've hit rock bottoms financially. That was a freaking painful one. Let me tell you that. But I've hit so many rock bottoms and I could be in the worst possible frame of mind, start to change my life. And all of a sudden, I don't know if you guys can resonate, but you forget what it was like to be a rock bottom. It's like you forget all the reasons you wanted to change. You forget all the reasons you're on this incredible journey of transformation anyway. And that's when our ego likes to try and rein us back in. And in its mind, all it's doing is keeping us safe. And if, you, um, if you're new to this language around the ego or the higher self, totally just take whatever resonates with you and completely leave the rest, my darling. But honestly, the easiest way I can conceptualize it is the difference between fear and love. Like we always have two choices in life. We can choose the path of fear. We can choose the path of love. I love choosing the path of love always, always, always. But sometimes more often than not, our ego likes to direct us or kind of derail us towards the path of fear. So especially and nowhere is the ego more does, nowhere does the ego speak more loudly, my beautiful love, than when you are on the verge or when you are on the cusp of something amazing, when you are on the cusp of something great, when you are on the verge of doing something that's going to change you in a beautiful way and really put you outside your comfort zone and transform every area of your life, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual. Because you guys know that this isn't just a 30 day program. This isn't just like a, oh, I'm going to try this and like really just like see if it works and you know, if it's for me, that kind of thing. Like this is, this is a line in the sand. It's like we've all gotten to this point when we've said yes to this program that we've been so unhappy with the way things were. We've decided that we deserve better. We've decided that we're going to do things differently and we have decided that we're worthy of change and transformation. So we all know that we've reached that point. We've reached our energetic minimum because we all have energetic minimums and energetic maximums. How bad we'll let things get before we do something to change and how good we'll let things get before we'll self-sabotage and flip ourselves back down. That's a whole nother topic. You can change your energetic minimums and maximums as you go whenever you like. And I'm going to teach you, might teach you how to do that in another video if we're all really lucky and if we have time over the next 30 days. But we've all hit the point where it's like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I've 
gotten to a point where for me it was my health it was realizing that I was napping every day at three o'clock in the afternoon because I would just physically did not have the energy to keep going I would crash I would lie down on my couch I would fall asleep and I wake up at like four or five and I just missed a whole two hours of my afternoon which is usually like genuinely the best like my favorite part of my day so for me it was experiencing that over and over and over again it was knowing that my digestive health wasn't where it needed to be it was knowing that my mental clarity I had a hectic brain fog and it was knowing that I deserved so much better and it was knowing that if I kept going down this path I really just wasn't accessing the full realm the full capacity of my potential as a spiritual being as a physical being as a coach as a wife as a wife <laughs> definitely not married as a girlfriend as a sister as a lover as whatever it is i wasn't accessing my full potential i'm not going to get over that for a while that's hilarious but i wasn't accessing my full potential and eventually the frustration of knowing that i wasn't accessing my full potential and really operating at my full capacity physically emotionally mentally spiritual spiritually relationally got so much that i decided that i needed to change so what happens when we're on the verge of and the cusp of something of greatness and of change and transformation is that often yeah our ego will come up with all of the reasons why being the way we were was a really good idea it'll come up with in its mind all of the reasons that it needs to tell us in order to keep us safe in order to keep us running back to our old habits our old pathways our old lit quite literally neural pathways in the brain that are well worn from thoughts that we've had repeatedly over and over again in the cycle of our mind but it'll try whatever it needs to do in order to bring bring us back into safety, into security, into what is known. Because we all know and like consciously and logically we know that what's over here, what's coming is so much greater, is far greater than anything that we could leave behind. But for our ego, what's familiar and what for mass unconsciousness on the planet, what's familiar is safe. What's familiar is we know what to do there. We've been there a million times so we can handle it. We know that we can cope there. The trick is, and for me, the biggest challenge that I've overcome in my own life in overcoming addiction and overcoming depression and healing my anxiety is knowing that what lies ahead of me and what is waiting for me is, is so much better than anything that I'm leaving behind here. And it's anchoring into that and it's fixating on that it's fixating on that goal so firmly it's getting it in my head the vision of what it looks like so clearly and it's fixating and focusing on it so intently that I can't help but leave this stuff in the past that I can't help but let go of old identities that I can't help but run towards what is waiting for me on the other side and what I want to talk about today more specifically is what is it that's stopping you from fully letting go of what's back here, the past, the old identity, and really stepping into the new identity that you're being called into, right? Because it's like there's so many things that we have, like hangups that we have around why it's a really good idea to stay attached to this old identity. But you guys know that this is your line in the sand moment. Like this is where we say, okay, the old has gone and the new has come. This is where we draw a line in the sand and we say, okay, that was then and this is now now the past is gone and this is who I'm that was who I was this is who I'm going to be that was then and this is the future that is awaiting me and again 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 you guys if you're having trouble with this if you're having trouble conceptualizing it or the fears popping up around oh my god this is new and scary and uncertain and exhilarating and whatever exciting whatever just know that what is coming is always 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 better than anything we could ever leave behind it is the nature and complete like unfolding of the universe to expand and evolve and grow towards greatness if you think about one of my favorite metaphors is the beautiful little acorn expanding into the giant oak tree right the acorn already has the divine blueprint to become the giant oak tree it doesn't need to do anything it doesn't need to try it doesn't need to struggle it doesn't need to strive in order to become and grow into the oak tree it just has to unfold it just has to grow it just has to push through the dirt and the shit around it and evolve and unfold fold into the beautiful oak tree that it was always destined to become so what is it you guys like if we're drawing the line in the sand and we're saying this isn't just a 28 day quick fix this isn't just a program that's gonna like i'm gonna try and then never like look at again this is a line in the sand moment for me whether you continue using isogenics or not whether you continue on this program or not i really hope that you do because this community is just completely unbelievably life-changing as are these products but whether you choose that or not this is your line in the sand moment where you say okay like that was then and this is now the old has gone and the new has come so what is it that's stopping you from letting go of that past identity and really stepping into your new one and i want to introduce you guys really quickly to this concept and what we're going to talk about in this video is this idea of duplicity so what is it i'm just going to put my 
it's resting on like a thing of flowers. So it looks really pretty behind you guys. I hope you can feel that. Um, but what is it, you guys, that's keeping you stuck or keeping you from really fully embodying this new identity that you're stepping into? Is it a fear around what, I don't know who I am without this part of me. I don't know who I am without my three o'clock cookie runs or my like Macca's runs or my three o'clock snacks in the afternoon. I don't know who I am with this excess weight around me. I don't know who I am without um, my my vices, my like Coke in the afternoon, my um, my coffee when I wake up first thing in the morning. I have a coffee every single day and I freaking, not every single day, but almost every day and I freaking love them. Like coffees are like my little cup of happiness in the morning. So never, ever, ever would suggest that you cut that out if it doesn't feel joyful for you. But is it fully coming from a place of like, this is joyful and lighting up my soul? Or is it coming from a place of like, I need this as a crutch to prevent me or to stop me from maybe looking at something that I haven't looked at before or to stop me from fully experiencing and being joyful in the present moment? Like, is it taking me into my alignment and towards who I want to be or is it taking me away from it? So I want you to really get clear on you guys and ask yourself, okay, where is this? Where am I holding on to this identity? Why is it serving me to be, to hold on to this identity? And I want to introduce this concept of duplicity. So what happens a lot of the time when we set when we set ourselves a goal and we set ourselves, um, we set out to make a change and transformation in our lives, what stops us or what holds us back from continuing on or from really taking those giant leaps to where we want to be is that these fears that we have in our head of what could possibly happen if we got everything we ever wanted. We're pretty across the fear of failure, right? You guys, like we're pretty like clear on like, okay, like I know that I have this fear that this could not work out for me. This could potentially be like just another program. This could potentially like not end well for me but what about the fear of success what's really holding you back what's the what's waiting for you at the finish line that is keeping you from running full pelt towards it if that makes sense like what is the thing on the other side of getting everything that you've ever wanted that is really holding you back from going towards it so I want you to ask yourself this is one of my favorite questions to do because what that does is it creates duplicity in our mind so we we tell ourselves we want it and we know that we want it mind body soul where we, we're moving towards this one one goal or this one path in this one direction but what happens is these little things crop up along the way like for example I'm just gonna get really honest with you girls here because this is like I know this is a safe space and I know this is a safe to be exactly who we are in here and I'm just gonna be exactly who I am so for me mine was around my weight loss I had this and this is the best way I know how to illustrate this I had this insane fear that if I lost weight I would be more attractive than my mum and guys would give me attention. I'm trying to like frame this in the right way. Guys would give me more unwanted attention and I wouldn't be safe to move through the world. So for me, and it's really hard to share this without going into a lot of my background and story and experiences, but for me, I've had um, a lot of experiences with guys in the past where I've been, um, I think every woman can sort of like relate to this moving through the world, but being the victim of unwanted advances or just unwanted attacks or things like even just a guy cat calling you when you walk down the street. So I had this unconscious belief that if I was attractive, if I lost weight, if I shed this physical layer of protection, this physical shell that I was keeping on me in the form of like visceral fat on my body, then I wouldn't be safe to move through the world. This was just totally, this is totally my experience, my story, my conception of it. It could be completely different for you, my love, and just know that, but this was my experience that, and this is what it was for me, is that I felt that if I lost weight, I would attract unwanted advances and unwanted attention from men and I wouldn't be safe to move through the world. So that was a really beautiful area for me to dive deeper into and heal some stuff around that. Um, another one was, yeah, like I said before, I would be more attractive than my mum, and that would create a, like a rift in our relationship. A lot of the times you guys, like there's so many dynamics that go, that are at play in the mother daughter relationship and that mother daughter dynamic that make it, make the daughter feel unsafe to outshine her mother. A lot of our body stuff, especially like our body image and our mental image around how we see ourselves comes from what we've learned um, around food and eating as well. But mostly around our body image comes from what we've learned from our like significant male role model in our life especially in um especially our mother being often being the most significant role model in our life for that but for me it was like i'll outshine my mom and i'll be more attractive than her and i'm not allowed to do that because that would be violating this law that this unspoken or unwritten rule that we have or this un unspoken contract that we have so it was like for me that was subconsciously that was a fear that i had around losing weight that was preventing me from actually stepping into or relaxing into 
to, as I like to call it, the weight that I was, you know, born to be and the weight that my body feels naturally best at and that I feel fucking amazing and confident at, right? So I want you to ask yourself, what is the worst case scenario that I'm imagining in my mind that would happen if I got everything I ever wanted? Like that question is going to help you unpack so many fears and don't believe me, like don't take my word for it. Go and do it for yourself. Go and ask yourself this question. Write it down in your journal, write it down on a piece of paper. What is the worst case scenario that I'm imagining if I got, that would happen if I got everything I ever wanted? Like for me, another one was like, trying to think of some examples now but another one for me was like I would um I would be I'd be like I'd be the um I'd be the butt of jokes or I'd be like the um I'd be the on the receiving end of daggers from other women women like walking down the street Do you know what I mean like we're, we're programmed with so much um so much the sense of like competition and jealousy as women like from such an early age through like the media through um you know articles that we read movies that we watch films that music that we listen to there's this like kind of unnatural competition that's bred into us and I think when we that can kind of create this idea that okay well if I shine if I show up if I'm like my most confident sexy attractive self in the world then I'm going to attract unwanted attention from other women I'm going to attract daggers when I walk down the street other women are going to be jealous of me like do you know what I mean you guys like it's so there's so much to unpack here but I want you to get clear on what it is what is it for you what is it like if you were to say that there's like the finish line is here you're goal weight is here your goal body is here your goal like human being that you are is here and this isn't just a physical thing we can talk about like your financial goals we can talk about your spiritual goals we can talk about your internal health goals whatever it is for you you guys what's the thing what's waiting for you on the other side of achieving it that you're terrified of that scares the living hell out of you get really clear on that and then we can talk about how to release it in another video really calling it out is like 99% of the job done. After that, it's really just a matter of, and you guys will talk about this in another video, but after that, it's really just a matter of saying, okay, how can I rewrite this? Like now that I'm looking at it, is this ultimately true? No. Is it ultimately true that, um, that I'm going to, that it makes me more open to like sexual advances on the street? Well, no, because I'm energetically unavailable for that anymore. And I know that I'm doing everything that I need to change the culture, first of all, around like men and women, but also to, um, to make sure that I'm a confident woman walking through the world and protecting myself against that, if that makes sense. So really making sure that, yeah, you get clear on what it is. What are the things that are holding you back? What are the things that are stopping you? What are the things that you're most afraid of? And then releasing them, going through and calling them out for what they are, which is bullshit lies that your ego is telling you, trying to keep you small one by one by one by one over and over and over again until you relax into your natural shape, until you surrender to the natural unfolding, until you can move so beautifully so gracefully so effortlessly towards what you want that it really does feel just like a natural unfolding and a natural surrendering and a natural becoming rather than a struggle or a strive or like a forcing yourself to achieve it I hope that makes sense, my loves. I've absolutely loved showing up with you. Remember, you don't need anyone else's fucking permission to be exactly who you are in the world. Know that you are so, so, so mother freaking worthy of becoming everything that you were called to be in this lifetime and more. And know that this is it. This is your line in the sand moment. This is the point where you say, I'm drawing a line in the sand. That was then. This is now. The old has gone and the new has come. You've got this. I have so much faith in you. I believe in you and I can't wait to watch you shine. I love you, honey girls. And um, yeah, I can't wait to chat to you soon. If this video resonated, make sure you leave a comment, tag your girlfriends and um, feel free to slide into my DMs. Love you, honeys. Mwah. Talk to you really soon. Bye.